What's Hello. up, everybody? Hey, Welcome back. Welcome to season three, episode four. Everybody's here. Trip, tell I'm us here. you were gone for with little stomach issues. Yeah, it was horrible, but well. it's a lot better now. I'm glad you're feeling better. Welcome back. Welcome Thank you. Back. Thank this you. is. I missed you all. We're, we we just passed midterms. We did just pass midterms. Well, oh, maybe no, we just took midterms. Yeah. <laughs> we're not saying we passed them. We're no, we passed we them. them. I passed. Midterms them. are in the are in the rearview mirror. Yeah, I think we did pretty good. Right? So now we just look forward to spring break and then another mm-hmm. month after that and then summertime. Spring finals. Finals. And yes. Whew. Hey, everybody's excited for that programming final, right? Yeah. No. I already started on the second part. Intro to programming. It's great so class. Well, let's talk about great things. And let's talk about how we have a great show coming up for you. We got the ever popular What's Happening. Mm-hmm. We've got Man Vice. We've got the segment. Yeah, we have got, the awesome segment. Yeah, we got Terrible Trikes coming up. We got a lot of great stuff. But let's talk about what's happening in the world right now. What's happening? Okay, so what's happening? What is happening, Lamar? Tell us. Samsung has done it again, and let's be honest, this probably won't be the last time they do it either. Samsung has confirmed their two new phones on the first of the month, the Samsung Galaxy 6 and the Samsung Galaxy 6 Edge. These phones will be made out of metal and have many new features and abilities that the others don't have. It's not yet set when they'll be ready for retail, but they did confirm that they will be out sometime early this year. Oh, the edge. That's going to be a nice screen to replace. Yeah. If it ever breaks. Yeah, it's going to go for like, I think, around 500 with contract. It's wow, made that's with a lot. glass. <clears throat> it's glass. I, I just phone. recently, yeah. I just oh, recently yeah. got the Note 4. And oh, I see it. Right this, this, this is awesome. Well, yes, I, I mean, I went, from the, I went from the Note 2 to the Note 4, and obviously it's a big, that's a big upgrade. change, you know, because yeah, you're, you're on a two-year contract. What's the back of it made of? Um, it's like leather. Yeah. It's kind of like a leather, but it's a hard, I mean, it's a good gripping material. It's lighter. Obviously, the, the phone is thinner. It's leather. Wow. I, I want, it's like a hard leather looking. Hard. It's just, it, it's better for grip. Um, it's super fast. Obviously, you know, technology changes so fast. I mean, phones, we've seen just about every year there's a new version of a new phone, whether it's Samsung, Windows phones, Apple phones every year. So, And you, you just kind of got to stay on top of it because the operating systems are constantly changing. Everybody wants to do more and more. And most people on their smartphones now, what do you do mostly on your smartphones? You watch videos. You watch videos, surf the web, and socialize. I've actually heard about that, that the movie industry. Like, it's so popular, it's changing the movie industry. The short films are becoming more popular because you can watch them on your phone instead of... Like that Power Ranger short film that was crazy. Oh. Uh, yeah, it was pretty crazy. Mm. I mean, Aaron, tell us about some crazy stuff that's happening around the world, though. Well, there's some crazy stuff happening with tomatoes in Australia. About 5,000 Australians gathered at Flemington Racecourse in Melbourne last Saturday to hurl around 300,000 tomatoes at each other for an event called, quote-unquote, Tomato mm. Man. This was apparently a tribute to the festival they have every year in Spain. Festival organizers told Mashable Australia that attendees were required to wear safety goggles and bathing suits. Even so, two tomato warriors were reportedly hospitalized. The nature of their injuries wasn't immediately clear. They also used tomato that were marked for disposal in order to not waste food. That's that is smart. a lot of tomatoes. It probably looked a lot worse than it was because everyone was all like red and gory looking and laying down and yeah. hospitalized by tomatoes. I mean, it's, it's a lot of tomatoes. I mean, is it three hundred thousand? Is it wasting tomatoes? No, they were. I mean, they said they were disposed, and like I don't know about you, but I've seen tomatoes. They go back pretty fast. Like, good day, yeah. good day, mate. I mean, if they bruise tomato, or something. Tomato, like good tomato, mate. But let's just talk about the fact that like two people went to the hospital. Like, how hard were you going? <laughs> like, not to two thousand. Probably like not ripe yet or something. They're still hard. Like five thousand people. I don't know. <laughs> 5,000 people. And 300,000. 300, still a lot of tomatoes. It's taking a long time for those tomatoes to like clean up. Yeah. Yeah. But messy. You know, you know, that could be a lot of ketchup. You know, it's been a long time since. It's almost one year since the Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 has disappeared. Uh, if you all remember last ma- uh, March, the plane was leaving Indonesia and heading to uh, China, but it never made its. Uh, destination and apparently it was months before they figured out what happened to it well yes and then they still have 
to me, from what I've seen, they have an area where they think it is, but they don't know exactly. And the area they think it is, is the Indian Ocean, which happens to be one of the oceans that we have done the least exploring in. We don't have maps because it's so deep. There's so many valleys and stuff. So what they're doing now is they have two ships out there who are sending submersibles down, and they're basically mapping the bottom seafloor, which can range from 10,000 to you know 20,000 feet deep, which is a long ways down, a lot of pressure and stuff. So you've got to use sonar to map the bottom, and which is kind of interesting because it's the first time we've ever seen this area, you know, explored it, and eventually they're going to find it. I mean, it's if it's there, you're going to find something oh, of it. Yeah. But this is the part of the ocean that we've never been to. Yeah. And I'm so, pretty sure we know more about the uh, surface of the moon than we do about the probably bottom of the Mars. Ocean. We know right. more about That's Mars. A fact. We know yeah. more about other planets than we do what's on the bottom of the sea, like Mars and stuff. Well, I mean, it's easier but, to get there yeah. than the bottom of the sea. But the, the, the interesting thing is, is if when they do find it and stuff, then all the stuff that led them to, to believe where it was at worked out. It just took them a long time to figure out the calculations because once all the systems went off and we couldn't track it no more, we just listened for pings from the engine. They were saying, hey, I'm still running, but I'm, I'm in this location, or maybe in this arc, whatever, which is going to probably lead to changes because there are thousands of flights every day that fly over oceans, from the Asia to America, from America to Europe, from South America to Europe and stuff. There's so many planes that go over the oceans, and if something happens, there's no radar coverage. I don't know if you've all been to Europe or anything. Yeah. If your plane goes down, you know they have the last known possible area, but they have no way of knowing... I mean, it could be days before you, before they get help to you. So I think it's going to lead to a change of how we track planes using satellites and stuff. It'll be interesting to see what happens. But it's been one year, and hopefully they will find the plane soon. Wow. You got any lighter news for us, Trip? I like do. Uh, video planes? games. Oh. Heard the Xbox, the PlayStation, and the Wii. What about the Shield? NVIDIA, known for their chip components, is the chip component it makes for the high-end PCs, is now developing a console. Yep, your life just got a whole lot more expensive. <laughs> the Shield w will use the Android TV. I didn't know there was an Android TV. Yeah. Which allows tablet game apps to run on television sets. That's really cool. The console will also connect to NVIDIA's grid service, which can stream video games over the internet, much like Netflix can stream movies. The combination says NVIDIA makes a compelling alternative, alternative to TV's lineup and video game devices. Uh, this is really interesting. Yeah, that's Really interesting story you got there. <laughs> I mean, it, Nevada's Nvidia is known for <laughs> Nevada's. Nvidia is known for their for, graphics cards. For the graphics cards, yeah. and they make some high end. If you're a true gamer, everyone's experienced Nvidia yeah, if cards. Yeah, like PC is run by ADMX. I'm sure, someone we know will pick one of those up. So yeah. I'm kind of curious to see how this is going. How it's going to look. Uh, that's I mean, exactly what I'm, I might pick one up. I'm just in the process of buying an Xbox One or a PS4. So. And the other, your other consoles out there are pretty expensive, and everything's built into that console, the hardware, you know, everything. So now this is going to be running on Android yeah, TV. Yeah, so this is basically a Steam console, which is we like, already tried that though. I know, but Nvidia hasn't tried it. <laughs> I mean, these what was the other one called? The other one's called the Ouya. Oh yeah, the Ouya. The Ouya yeah, yeah, yeah. was only like ninety nine dollars, and it wasn't even really advertised well. So. I think Caleb got one. Yeah, Caleb has one. It's <laughs> in his car. I'm, I'm interested to see how they do. I mean, this is, you know, it's newer technology, and it's hopefully it's cheaper to purchase. But if you can experience the, the enhancement and the graphic abilities that they can do, and they can bring it to the platform of the Android TV, that's going to be. It's going to be pretty fun. I mean, it's all about the engines that they use to make the games. The hardware and stuff. Yeah. And, and like, They're known for their, you know. Their graphics card, yeah, but um, the engine is what makes the graphics. The graphic card just lets you look at them. Oh, can't wait to see what it looks like. Yeah. And if you can't wait for stuff, then sorry, because we got a commercial break. But we'll be here when you get back. That's what's happening. I want smaller classes, bigger discussions, and personal attention from my professors. Knowing that they care is really important to me. I want to make sure Brian knows that I'm in his corner. I really care about my students. That's why I come to work every day. My professors believe in me, and I know I'll do just fine when I transfer to a university. That's why I chose Gulf Coast. Staying up to date with Gulf Coast State College just got easier with the new mobile app. It's a quick and convenient way to view college events and upcoming dates, your class schedule and grades, important announcements in social media, and the interactive map for all of our campuses. 
You can even chat live with a librarian and get help with a research project. The free mobile app is available for Apple and Android devices. Simply scan the code or search for Gulf Coast State College on the App Store or Play Store and download it today. Welcome back, guys. Hey, y'all. This is a packed segment right here. This is a packed segment. So let us tell you about what happens when a bunch of grown men get some tricycles <laughs> made by their engineer friend, Tom. We have a segment for you called Tom's Terrible Trikes. Shout out to Tom. Shout out to Tom. So let's see what our homie Tom was up to. So this is the trike that Tom made. This is a air powered C2, C021. Makes me think of BattleBots. Yeah, he had the engineering class work on it. So they're pretty intense. Like these are literally giant wooden tricycles powered by air and gas and wind. That's awesome. Just showing a little bit how it's made and whatnot. Yeah, we actually had, if you know, um, Jason, Jason actually went so hard when he was riding it, he broke that off the handle steering thing. PCB piping. Yeah, PCB piping. That's Tom right there, the genius behind it all. So these are all made by wood platforms by engineering students, and they run on air. Yeah, yeah you can see the air compressor behind the uh, seat. That's Brad right there. This you know Brad. This one's runs on the motor. So you guys know Brad, he filled in for trip when he was having his bad diarrhea. And this he's is steering with his feet. Yeah, you steer with your feet. It's crazy. So the ones that steer really you steer with your feet. Yeah, the ones that steering really steer with your feet. There he goes. That's pretty cool. Air is causing that's, that's, this vehicle to. That's the motor. That's one. the motor one. Oh. The air one you'll see. You know, me not, but. So using your feet as a mechanism to turn by just Imagine pushing. Imagine seeing one of these on the road. Yeah, he had to fill it out. This is his first maiden voyage that Brad took on this one. The engineers tested it out first, but this is this is a surveillance standard civilian giving a test run. This is here at the Advanced Technology Center on the. Shout out to Golf Chaos. This is yeah. a GoPro footage of this. It's pretty crazy, pretty swanky. I mean, look at those cars. You know, these cars that use fuel, fossil fuels to, you know, gas and everything and There's diesel. There's somewhere in there. Did he stop? Is he a road? Well, uh, yeah, he is a No, he's yeah. not a law abiding citizen. That was not a complete stop. Yeah. Sound of the police. And these are engineer students who are um, learning mechanics and stuff. Just going around, showing stuff. This is pretty cool. Yeah. You get I mean, the gas. Here he comes. Look at this. Look at the speed on this. I almost, almost need a five-point harness on that thing. <laughs> yeah. They're actually building another one that's going to have a metal frame and have, like, full-on Ooh, butts. Jace, yeah, they're about to race. It's going to be... Ooh. So one's power and one... Oh, they're both power. No, one's air over there. Okay. Yeah, so that's on the Brad air. is now on the air power one. So... Air compression. Air compression power. That one had a um, wooden stick brake that you had to drop to the ground to stop it. It was kind of sketchy sounding. Just a little bit. So there's nowhere to slow down on that one. Yeah. Brad was afraid of the full power, so he didn't really go fast with that one. Just but imagine if you had like carbon fiber as your Yeah. Jason frame. just decided to take off, and then you see Brad right here. Just Afraid of because Brad had almost crashed into a car earlier. Where's the trikes? Afraid. Wait for it. What? Oh. If you want to pick up what? girls, guys, this is how to do it. <laughs> Look at this guy. This is Look how to pick up girls. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> you probably got so many numbers. It's not a two seater, so. <laughs> There's Brad. You ain't afraid of the power. You can't be afraid of the trike. You have to. Oh, and there's no way to stop. Get to be the trike. Now, was this a this a class project or individual project? It was a class project actually. And then there's Brad. <laughs> Brad almost getting hit right there. Look right at there. this. And this one's running on air. Yeah, that's crazy. That's pretty cool. Stick. Yeah, <laughs> that's literally how you wait. I think he's gonna shoot. Yep, that's how you stop it. You just pull it down. <laughs> <laughs> that's your brake brake mechanism. That is pretty cool. Awesome. To take something 
I mean, you have to build all that together to take the components. Yeah. Wow. Big shout out to Tom for that one. Yeah, that's just some of the awesome stuff we do here at Golf Coast. If you want to join, and if you don't want to join, still you know awesome. where to find us. That's yeah. in the engineering program. Yes. They do a lot of cool things. For that. So we have another segment coming up. With Candy Logan Tell with the countdown. One, the countdown top with five. Logan. Yeah. His top five today? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Top five movies mm -hmm. made into video games. Yeah. Let's roll that one. Hey guys, welcome back to The Countdown. I'm Logan and today I'm going to count down for you the top 5 best video games based on movies. Coming in at number 5 is Tron 2.0, the original sequel to the Tron movie of the 80s until Tron Legacy came along. This game resonated with fans pretty well, especially, especially with its story, which I'm not going to spoil for you. The story is interesting and engaging with characters and dialogue that toes the line between humans and programs just as the original movie did. But uh, going into my number four pick, it's pretty, it's one thing to make a game based off a good movie. You're gonna make a profit either way. But to make a game off a bad or hated movie, that's pretty amazing feat to make that good. But number four is X-Men Origins Wolverine. This game is what most fans wanted the movie to be. This game is all about disturbing action. And rather than neuter Wolverine like so many games have done to so many other movie or comic book characters, Raven Software has created what some fans consider the spot on version of the character in an adaptation up until that point. But number three is the Star Wars Trilogy arcade game. Yeah, an arcade game. This arcade game takes you through key events of the original trilogy you get to blow up the Death Star, fight on Hoth, even face off against Darth Vader. And the game, the way you control it is with a joystick and two buttons. And honestly, that's all you need to play this game. It'll take you through some of the best events of some of the best movies ever made. Anyway, my number two pick is Spider-Man 2. Of the three Spider-Man movies starring Tobey Maguire, this is what some fans consider the best in the series. And the games are pretty much the same way. The main reason for this, I guess, is because in the game you get to web sling around town uh, doing almost anything you want at any time. It doesn't hurt that they added a lot of elements and villains from the comics so that you can play it through the main story of the movie or play through the side quests and feel more like the comics. Anyway, guys, my number one pick is GoldenEye 007. A first-person shooter based on the 1995 James Bond film, this game is amazing both its single-player and its multiplayer mode. The single-player you get to unlock other weapons as you level through, and its multiplayer, <laughs> its multiplayer is one of the best on the system. Revolutionizing this genre and is said to be the best single-player first-person game on that system. Anyway guys, if you've played video games based on movies before, you know that games like these are the reason that they're still making games like that instead of how they usually are. But And that was the top five best video game movies ever made. I'm Caleb Jordan. This is Logan Hartsog. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. See you next time. As always, Logan, way to, way to hold down the top five. Way to top go five from five, five, four to three to two to one. That takes a lot of skill and a lot of talent. Yes. Well, and, for, that's okay. some interesting movies made into video games. I was going to say, some of those I don't agree with because, you know, but it's all good. Cause I didn't agree with number two at all. Yeah. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Yeah. You know what time it is? Hammer time. It's time, time for notification. Yeah. Not hammer time. It's, it's the dance of the devil. So let's see what... Caleb has in this week's notification. Nerdy stuff. Roll the clip.
Hello, I'm Caleb, and this is Nerd Edification, where I tell you the best bits of the nerdy news of the week. Starting off, World of Warcraft will soon introduce a whole new economy, allowing players to both spend in-game gold on real-life game time and to exchange real-life money for tokens that can be sold for in-game gold. The new system will launch in an upcoming patch, Blizzard says, and though they haven't announced specific pricing details yet, they do have a big Q&A that will address many potential questions. Each token can only be sold once, gold values will fluctuate based on supply and demand, and they are hoping that this will lead to fewer account compromises and do a better overall game experience. Basically, it means for all the people who do nothing but play WoW in their basement will now be able to spend the oodles of gold they have collected over the years. We did it! Strong net neutrality has finally arrived in the United States. And, as expected, the Federal Communications Commission voted 3-2 to two Thursday morning to, to identify broadband internet service as a utility using the authority Congress granted to it with the Title II Act of the Communications Act. This identification will prevent providers from charging certain networks extra to operate at full speed, or blocking access to legal content, which our practices internet activists have long warned would harm the quality of the internet. After a decade of being blind, a 68-year-old man from Minnesota is now able to see again. Alan Zedrid started having serious vision problems around 20 years ago due to a condition known as retinitis pigmentosa, a degenerative eye disease which affects the retina. The condition went on to end Zedra's professional career as a chemist when about 10 years ago, he was declared effectively blind. Raymond Ezzi Jr. MD, a Mayo Clinic researcher and ophthalmologist, had been working on the second site Argus II retinal prosthesis system when he reached out to Zedrid, suggesting that Zedrid could be a suitable candidate for a bionic implant. During the process, Izzy fitted 60 electrodes into the eye of Zedrid. The electronics work by interacting with a special camera attached to Zedrid's glasses and a separate computer pack capable of sending information to the electrodes embedded in Zedra's retina, which then sends signals straight to the optic nerve. Following the implantation, Zedrid, a grandfather of 10, explains the process in simple terms. While he can't make out detail, he can kind of make out shapes and outlines, effectively allowing him to be able to see his wife and family for the first time in 10 years. <laughs> so sweet. Eating cereal may seem like a fast way to check off the have the most important meal from your daily to-do list, but Taco Bell has streamlined the cereal process with the newest creation, Captain Crunch Delights. Whereas traditional crunchberry consumption methods involve the addition of cereal and milk to a bowl, Taco Bell decided that not only is this method archaic and boring, but it's also very inefficient. That's why it's the new Captain Crunch Delights combine the cereal and the milk into one delicious deep fried bowl. That's all for this week. If you want to hear more and in in-depth news just like this, check out the Nerd Edification Hour, where yours truly, along with my friends Rachel and Jake, talk about all the nerdy things. We record live on the Alternation 1480 AM radio station from 1 to 2 PM. If you miss the show, though, don't worry. I upload the NEH to my YouTube channel every Thursday around lunchtime. The channel name is Strangely Entertaining. You can also look us up on Facebook, and it would mean a lot if you followed me on Twitter. Until next week, stay fancy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> nerdy. That's some nerdy stuff, Caleb. He's just so intense with it sometimes. And Caleb like, knows the stuff. He really he does. does. I mean, he can find some interesting stories and stuff, but he knows 
technology. He knows what he's talking about. That's why he's our guy. He knows intros too. Like that's a pretty great intro. <laughs> yeah. Pretty long. Pretty great. Mm-hmm. You know what else is pretty good? The open letter with Caleb Jordan. Caleb number two. That's coming up. Caleb by a different name. Dear Spring Breakers, congratulations! You have made it to the halfway point of the semester, providing you with your annual allotment of inadvisable adventures without the requirement for academic betterment. Over this next week, you will do some things that you will either remember fondly or with immense disdain for the rest of your life. As a local, here are some things I would suggest bringing to better your enjoyment of your spring debauchery. Sunscreen, because nobody wants second degree burns to ruin their fun on only the dawn of day two. Water, proper hydration is a key factor in curbing those dreaded hangovers. Water, no, you think I'm kidding, it's important. A buddy. The buddy system has been used for centuries by the human race to further their survival. Find a buddy and don't ever let them out of your sight. Ever. Some local fishermen caught a great white shark not a week ago. And your buddy could prove instrumental in your survival in in the event that you come face to face with one. You simply grab your buddy and push them in the direction of the shark, providing you ample time to swim away. But where will you swim? One of the most enjoyable parts of this vacation is not knowing where you're going until you get there. There's no telling what will transpire, but you can dream. You've been waiting for this all semester, and now it's time for you to take advantage of the fact that you're not in your hometown. You're in someone else's. So live it up. And remember, man was not meant to soar without powered flight. Seriously, balcony jumping is an important issue to discuss and make yourself aware of it. It's easily avoidable. Make sure your friends get home back in time to finish the semester in one piece. And have fun! What up, what up, what up? Okay. Caleb's got a really awesome open letter. Yeah, yeah he does. Uh, I mean, he's a funny dude. Like, Spring Breakers, man. Spring Breakers. Like, <laughs> open letter of Spring Breakers was pretty hilarious. Like, when will they stop? Or when will they start? Yeah, Do they ever just stop? Hmm. All right, so we're going to go to break, but when we come back, we're going to have the favorite part of the show. Yes. Which Man is... Advice. What? I don't know why we're pointing at each other, but... Man Advice is next, so when we come back, stay, stay tuned. Stay tuned. I want a job where my skills make a difference. I discovered plenty of career options at Gulf Coast State College. Candace is being trained by medical professionals, and she's definitely going to be prepared. We offer more than 150 programs. Some take less than a year to complete. My dream is to work with a cardiac team. I want my patients to feel they're in capable hands. That's why I chose Gulf Coast. I don't want an ordinary education. I want to be challenged. I'm looking for more than just classroom lectures. Daniel's getting the chance to work on real projects for real companies. I never teach the same class twice. Technology is always changing, and so are we. I have lots of ideas, and I'm ready to make a difference in the world. That's why I chose Gulf Coast. Welcome welcome back, guys. guys. We're back. Who's ready to hear some advice from some men? How to live your life. Debo. Man advice time. Mm-hmm. Aaron, what well, you let's got? kick it off with this first one, y'all. Alrighty. Dear the crew, is it better to shave my armpits or no? Who's that Depends from? on what country you're coming Depends from. On what I mean, I'm not you're actually from. no, not true. Uh, any country you're in, you have perfectly right to not shave your armpits at all, man or woman. No discrimination, but... Talk to your parents about it first. Yeah. Is that uh, a male or a female? Are you... I I will say if you do want to seem... If you're a woman and you want to seem more... Attractive. Attractive to a good population of men... I'm not judging you if you have yes. hair. I think you're beautiful. But the you way can do whatever you, you believe want. in made you. Mm-hmm. Who is that from? Does they leave their name? No, I, I wouldn't <laughs> have either. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it's also an uh, Yeah, honestly, for endurance. that one, do whatever you, you want to do. It's just hair and it's your hair. I mean, yeah, just make sure it's clean and kept. But if it's going crazy, don't 
expect a lot of phone numbers or anything. <laughs> well, I, I've heard athletes, they do shave hair. It's like an adrenaline thing or something. For speed. For, or it's not for speed, but it also helps the chemicals in the body when you're endurance. And so, but I mean, if, as far as... That's got, you got, you sweat a lot, man. You've I mean, got to... You, judge you. As long as you take a shower and bath and stuff and you like use deodorant or, or whatever. A lot of basketball players in... Uh, UFC players, or UFC fighters, shave their armpits. Yeah, I mean, if you're in basketball, you got. Sounds like it would tickle. Just stay. A lot. As long as you stay clean. I mean, like if you're itching on your side, maybe you could like use it. I don't know. I'm just saying, like I don't have this issue. I mean, I'm not saying whether I do or I don't. Do you? But okay, so it's time for the next man, guys. <laughs> is it not? What you got him on? Oh, it's me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What you got? Dear the crew, how do you know when to shut up when you've already said too much? Just you know? stop. Just, just walk just away. Just stop. Yeah, just drop walk it. Away. The drop the mic. Literally, just <laughs> just don't just stare at them directly in the face. Just walk away. Just be like, upset. Hold out the mic. Drop it. Drop the mic. Drop a mixtape. Drop a mic. Just. Do whatever you can to get out of that situation. Fake a fire. Fake your mom calling you. Like, I mean, just... And the next time, think before you yeah, say think too before you Think before you act, man. Learn. Or, well, man. Yeah. That's how. That's how you do it. That's how you be a man. You get amazing hair. Like all of us here. Should we do a universal True. hair flip? You guys down? I, I, no, I have no hair. No. Hmm. What about yours, Brandon? <laughs> all right, my turn. This one has no name, and it says, why the clock? <laughs> well, Tell us about the clock, Brandon. Clock tells you time. <laughs> yes. Time that we all use. But. While we're working so hard in Dylan Jones. Why? Wait, wait. Is this like a homonym or a metaphor of, like, life? Like how we all have a clock and it's ticking? Like, are they well, all our clocks are ticking. Death? All our clocks are ticking. This is a deep man. It's very life. ethereal question. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, you just walk outside, and one day. I mean, I've have you heard the why? saying? What is it? Uh, why anything? Even a broken clock is right twice, twice a day. day. I know. So, like, I mean. But we have a clock that works. I think we do have <laughs> yes. a clock that works. I hope so. It's a very expensive clock. Is a clock. We just got a new clock. That's the yes. whole point of this. And, they, and it may have been really expensive, and it looks like someone wanted to know. It looks like an alarm clock. Why? But, I mean, it probably, like, at least we know that like it's right twice a day, yeah. Brandon. And one of the times, we won't even be in here to see if it's right. But like we know. Well, the good thing is when you do um, video shows and stuff like this, you always want to know the time. Because our viewers at home, you know, they want to get things done and, and know how long the show's gonna last and we like to keep everything, you know, spiffy and, and great. Spiffy. We are pretty you know, spiffy. We, you know, we, uh, oh, we do have one more letter, don't we? Yes, oh, yeah. we do. Oh. Mine. Time is very important. Last letter, we know you want to shout. Sure. I'm lactose intolerant, but I love cheese. Please help. <laughs> Lactaid. Um, see a doctor. Keep eating cheese. There are pills you can take. Don't yeah, stop. What happens when you eat cheese? Aren't you lactose intolerant, Mom? I am. What happens when you eat cheese? There are pills you can take <laughs> and different types of lactose intolerant cheese use, cheeses that you can buy and milks and yeah. Well, talk to your, My uh, dad your doctor. is also lactose intolerant and works around it. I mean, yeah, see, Jack see, Jack see a medical profession. It's worth it. Whatever happens, Kobe Jack, it's worth it. I mean, it. we've come so far where, where if you were like lactose intolerant, you couldn't even touch, you know, dairy products or anything and stuff, like mm -hmm. ice cream or anything like that. And now they've <laughs> they have, uh, you know, medicines and stuff and abilities so you to... buy lactose intolerant lactose ice cream. Ice cream. Yeah, 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 ice cream and stuff, which Gelati. it's amazing. It's probably not as good as regular, it but I mean... Isn't. But... You, you can't be picky I mean, if you're lactose intolerant. You know, intolerant. technically, if you don't have a lactose, that makes you a mutant. So, like, I mean, go out and try and do stuff, like, with cars. Because, I mean, like, you have you have a deficiency which makes you a mutant. And, like, Professor X and Wolverine, so, like, that's cool. He could have been lactose intolerant. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Right? Are all mutants lactose intolerant? These are the questions we have. The world may never know. Not sure, but 
I One know thing we do know. We're ending the show, but before we go, is that we have a Facebook. We do have a Facebook. Mm. A Facebook. Yes. What is but it called? It's called facebook.com backslash the crew five. We do Number have five. friends on that Facebook, but we could always use more friends. We have fans. We need likes. We need more you fans. We need you at home. Homies. You are watching this program, either watching it online. We need you to like our Facebook page. We are so ready to become a boy band, but we need more support. We need you. Album. We want we your like ideas. You we want to hear what you want to see. What do you want us to do here at campus? Do you want us to drop an album? We do we know that we have album. one more Spring Break Patrol coming up where we're going to go around campus and see what everybody's doing because uh, next week is going to be a busy week for Possibly some of us. The beach. The beach. Some of us are going to be busy next week. Mm-hmm. Some of us are going to Luke Bryan concert. Luke Bryan concert on Panama City Beach. Brandon His last I, spring break concert. Brandon and I are going to be there. Trip and Aaron are going to frequent the Waka Flocka and Juicy J concert. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I guess you bet you didn't see that coming. Did you? Country and rap. Maybe yeah. some secret footage will unearth itself. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. <laughs> or maybe not. All right. Only if you like us on Facebook. Yeah. This has been a, our fourth show. We thank you for watching. And until next time. I'm a mom, y'all. Oh, wait. We didn't say that. <laughs> okay, let's do this again. I was waiting for Until you. next time. I'm, I'm a mom. I'm Aaron. I'm Brandon. Bye. We love you. We love you guys. Bye, Spock. <laughs>